Everyone's always asking how I style my client's hair, so I thought I'd put together a video for you guys. So something really interesting just happened. I'm done with work right now, and I thought to myself, self, I don't really feel like washing my hair when I get home. So do you know what I did? I washed my hair at that shampoo bowl back here, and it was amazing. And when I was done, I blow dried half of my hair. Not all of it, not all of it, some of it. The front part, the part that matters. And I feel like I'm becoming my mom because she, for the life of me, has washed her hair in the kitchen sink. It's weird, it doesn't make sense to me, I don't get it. But here I am washing my hair in my work sink and it's so much better than in the shower. Who am I becoming? Do you know what else is nice? The side bang that I have right here. That doesn't happen at my house. You know why? Because I don't have a brush at my house. I am a hairstylist and I don't have a brush. I do at the salon. So I blow dried my hair with the brush and I've got this nice little, you know, side bang thing. Kind of flips out a little bit. All I have at my house is a comb. One. I have one comb at my house. And if I can't find it, I don't brush my hair. I don't comb it. I think that this is going to become a regular thing where I wash my hair at work and then I have blow dry it like the 80 year old ladies you don't see the back it doesn't matter the front part though looks on point that little clip was from one of my Instagram stories and I wanted to insert it because it kind of explains why I'm washing my hair at the salon if you haven't washed your hair at the salon you need to do it it's so much better than at home I'm serious I think I've touched base on it a little bit, but like my mom growing up forever has washed her hair in the sink downstairs. Like she will go, she'll like take a shower and then she'll go downstairs. And like she literally has her shampoo and conditioner downstairs and it's never made sense to me. She's like, it's just easier. And while I don't understand how bending over a sink is easier, because that doesn't really make sense to me, um, I understand the convenience of just washing it like this when I'm at work and not having to like, you know, I feel like it's just so much easier to comb it out here than at home for some reason. I don't know why. But I just dread washing my hair at home. So much nicer just doing it at work. So usually when I wash my hair, or like at home, when I take a shower, I'll just like leave my hair in a ponytail and then just come to the salon and wash my hair. Either before or after clients that day. Like, I don't make it a regular habit. Unite 7 Second Spray, one of my favorites. here little serum not too much because it's kind of thick and I'm not a big product person like I really hate having a lot of stuff in my hair so I'm just gonna use this Busta um, kind of like a texturizing spray. It smells like coconuts. It's so yummy. It's so much nicer combing my hair out ever since I trimmed it. But let me tell you, nothing was ever as good to comb my hair out 
than when I had done my Brazilian blowout in my hair. That thing was freaking amazing. And honestly, if I, I mean, I'll probably do it, give myself a Brazilian blowout, you know, like in the front areas, focus on one of these days. Um, just for the simple fact of how much nicer it was to brush my hair out. Like I would always do a Brazilian blowout just for that. Like there were times where I would, like the comb would just like glide through my hair. It was so soft. And now I have hair all over me. I should have worn a cape. By the way, you guys, I wanna let you know that I did this video on Christmas Eve. And so if I make references to Christmas, that's why it's because I'm putting this out quite a bit later than when I recorded it. Okay, I've just started on the bottom areas and have already curled those sections because not like you can see it very well. So I'm just gonna start video recording at this point. So one of the things that my clients always say is they don't know how to get the curl that I can do when I'm styling their hair. So here's my little tutorial. So take little sections, probably like this size right here. And whether you're using a flat iron or a curling iron, like whatever way you are more comfortable curling your hair, because I know not everyone is comfortable using a flat iron or a wand or whatever. So whatever your way of curling hair, like it doesn't matter. The way that you do it though, is every section curl back. And I really slowly like move my flat iron. I don't ever let it sit in one spot for too long because then you're gonna create little dents in the hair. So always just really slowly guide the hair through the flat iron. And in the front, since it's usually a lot finer here, I try not to let it sit in the hair for too long. But do you see that? It kind of has a weird dent. So I'm just gonna slide it down because I kind of want the ends to be a little bit straighter. So I'm not guiding my hair all the way through the flat iron. Um, I'm kind of leaving the ends out to straighten a little bit. Like there's sometimes that I see people doing hair and, or, you know, curling their own hair and they are taking the smallest sections. I don't got time for that. Like that's just, that's too time consuming. And I personally don't like a lot of product. I know I've already touched base on this, but if you want your curl or if your hair doesn't hold very well, then um, get this extra body finishing spray by Paul Mitchell. I am not kidding you when I use this on my clients, like I'm obsessed with the spray. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, it's just amazing. The spray is amazing. Um, try not to use a wet spray, like a pump, because that usually sprays on the hair really wet in little drops and it can cause the hair to like either frizz out or just get a little bit too damp in those areas and then you lose the curl. Um, so use an aerosol is what I prefer. Another thing is the temperature of the flat iron slash whatever hot tool that you're using. So personally, I don't like using a hot tool if I can't see what the temperature is on it. Like I have a Chi flat iron and you just turn it on and I'm sure it's at, at least 400 degrees, but I can use that on myself because I know my hair can handle it. I'm not blonde. I really don't use heat on my hair very often. So if it's a one-time thing when I'm at home using it, like I'm not too worried about it. It's not gonna fry my hair. But if I were to use that every day, actually like I used to, when I used to style my hair more often, um, that it, my hair was really, really dry. So just be really cautious of the temperature of the hot tool that you're using. If you're blonde, Try not to go over a temperature of 350 if you can. Um, the reason why is because, especially if you're platinum, you're gonna be, first of all, damaging your hair a lot because the heat is just too, too much on your, um, you know, fragile hair. It's gonna be drying it out even more. And then second of all, 
if you have um, like super silvery or ashy blonde hair. And I wanna do a demonstration of this sometime, but that heat can literally burn out the color of your hair. I was doing a color one time on, luckily, a coworker, and it was in the ends of her hair, or like, you know, in the back of her hair. And um, I barely had tapped her hair with the flat iron, and it completely like burnt out in that one spot. Um, a marking of the flat iron, it had removed the color in that area where I touched, tapped her hair. And so now, whenever I do my clients that are like platinum blonde or super silvery, whatever, they might be as ashy and white and silvery as they could get. And if the flat iron's too hot, it will completely warm the hair up. So when you go home and over time, your toner starts to fade out or your hair starts yellowing or whatever, that's not really, you know, fault of the hairstylist at all. It's typically because your hot tool is too high of a temperature. So you just, I would honestly start at 300 and work your way up. Um, I had a client, I posted a video of her, my six hour long um, blonde extension transformation that I had just posted recently. Um, I was testing the temperature on her hair and I had to go all the way down to 320. I have never had to be that low of a temperature on somebody before. And I asked her what temperature she uses on her on her hair. And thankfully she said 320 also, which is really good. Like when clients tell me that kind of stuff, like I just feel like they're my good little clients. Like <laughs> they pay attention to what I say. They're taking care of their hair like they're supposed to. So when she told me that she uses 320 heat on her hair, like that made me really happy because that was like the perfect temperature for her hair to not be yellow. And I lost my section. So I'm going through into the back area and I'm just curling the hair all in one direction back. This like draw a line down the back center of your head, like up until that point, like make sure that all the hair is curled backwards to that line. And then um, on this side, curl backwards to that line too. And then re-twist your hair back up after you release it from the heat and then just kind of hold it for a few seconds because it has to cool down. The heat is what makes the style or the curl pattern and then cooling off is what sets the curl. So I want to make sure that my hair is still in that curl pattern as it's cooling down because a lot of people when they do their hair, they'll curl it and then immediately they'll go through and they'll like run their hands through their hair or comb through it or whatever. Don't do that. That's gonna drop your curl out. It's gonna cause it to go flat. And if you're anyone like me, where if you don't use a hot enough temperature, then your hair is just not gonna hold, so. And I could honestly probably go a little bit warmer. I just don't think I have to.
I'm sure I'm gonna go back through my hair towards the end and like in the back and just have to redo a whole bunch of things. So, tomorrow is Christmas and can we talk about online Christmas shopping? All right, this last year was the first year that I really like did Amazon shopping. I'm not like a really big online purchaser anyways, but like last year for Christmas was the first year that I really like did Christmas shopping online and I really liked it. So this year I did like 100% of my Christmas shopping online and I was able to find some really good deals. So that made mama happy. I don't know, what about you guys? Leave it in the comments, like, are you guys online shoppers? Or do you like the, you know, going around town and going to the stores and seeing what stores have and all that stuff? Like, I just can't do it. And let me just say this also, like the area that I'm in, um, Mount Vernon, Washington, like our mall, is straight from the 90s, okay? It's like, we really don't even have a mall anymore. They have been closing down stores in it constantly. Like, I haven't gone in our, in our mall in probably like, since last Christmas to get my son's Christmas pictures. Like, that's all I go there for. I think all of the jewelry stores have shut down. Like, there might be a few, like, I don't know. I don't even know. TJ Maxx or like we have our movie theater there but like other than that like our mall sucks we don't have anything I go to Target I love Target I love another mall that's like near Seattle but our mall just is ridiculous it used to not be like that though but then we had a shooting in our mall a couple of years ago in the Macy's and I think like I have a few friends that work in the mall and I think they said that's one of the things that really um, killed the business. Like I haven't even stepped foot in that Macy's. I was actually there at the mall earlier the day when that happened. Thank God my son and I had left by that point, but I just haven't, I haven't been back there to go shopping. I don't think I ever will, honestly. I feel like it's kind of disrespectful to just smooth it over and act like nothing, not act like nothing happened, but just like, I don't know. I feel like they opened that they should have had like a good month off, you know, closing down the store before they reopened. And I think a week later they opened up the store and I just thought that was horrible. out of respect for the community and the families and all that stuff, I just felt like they should have taken more time off instead of being like, oh, we need our business and whatever. You know, I think at first they had put up like a little memorial thing and then I don't, just, I don't even know if it's still there because I haven't been there. I just can't imagine like shopping in a mall and going to like the Clinique counter, which is where you would, would have gone to. And like, I just wouldn't have been able to work there. Like there's a lady that was shot behind the Clinique counter. Like, how do you go on working there? I would have to quit. I don't think I would have been able to do that. And so to go shop there, I feel like is equally just disrespectful and how do you just go on working somewhere? And I understand a lot of people probably don't have choices, you know, that's their job. But personally, I just don't think I could have done it. All right, so now that we're up to the front and the top layer, I tend to take smaller sections because I want to make sure since my hair doesn't hold very well that the curl is a little bit tighter because it's gonna relax and I want to make sure it lasts through the day. So I always smooth the roots out to get rid of any frizz. And then slowly turn through it and then towards the ends drop out the curl. And then retwist.
Anyways, I don't know how we got on Amazon shopping to like the mall, <laughs> mall shooting. That's kind of random, but anyways, um, yeah, so this is the first year that I've been big on like Amazon shopping for Christmas. My house was full of boxes, so that wasn't very pleasant, but oh well. You see that? I stayed way too long. I shouldn't have held it in that spot. So that's why I say move the flat iron, move your hot tool, don't let it hold in one spot for too long. So now I gotta go and try to rub it out. And I probably won't be able to. It's probably gonna be there for the rest of my life. Learn from my mistake on that side and keep it moving. Because I don't want these ones too tight, I usually really try to pull the curl out. I want there to still be a wave, but I don't want it to be too tight. So I just really pull the curl as it cools down. I have the world's largest forehead. I try to like, you know, I don't know. My bangs are always something, like my facial framing is something that I always have a hard time with and I never know how the hell to do it because my forehead's so big so some curls just don't look as good on me as they do my clients. And I'm actually okay with how that is. All right, so now that we have our curl done, we're gonna let the hair sit. And I feel like I should do more with this because it's gonna continue to straighten. Then I'm, by the end of the day, I'm gonna hate it. So just give me a second and just wait. It's a little bit better, okay. So yeah, we're gonna let the hair cool down for a few little minutes. check the back area to see if there's any any curls that I forgot to do and it all looks pretty good so there's a few different ways that you can run your hands through your hair if you like to have more of a defined curl then once the hair I mean you could leave it like this if that's what you prefer that's fine um, I can feel my hair is kind of cooled down so I'm just gonna give it a really quick spray Since it's the holidays, we could do with some hairspray. All right. Let that dry before I touch it because if your hair's wet when you have hairspray in it and then you run your hands through your hair and it's wet, then it's gonna like straighten the hair out and you'll lose that curl because it's damp now. Okay. And it feels, this feels pretty wet over here still. So we're not gonna touch this. I'm just gonna try to scrunch it back up but this feels pretty good. All right, so if you like a more defined curl, then all you have to do is take your fingers and just finger through the hair a little bit. That's gonna keep your curl a lot tighter, a lot more of a defined curl. It's just gonna be a little bit more PC. See how that is? Like the curl is still there. It's kind of more gathered together and some people prefer their hair that way, which is totally, that's fine. Not are we dry. I'm just gonna finger through a little bit over on this side so you can see what effect that does a little bit better. So yeah, just kind of fingers through it. But the way that I like to do my clients here, the way that has become my 
signature curl that all my clients and other people know me as. Um, and I only say signature because that's what other people have told me. So I take like the bottom layer and I feel like when I comb the hair with a finer tooth that I get a better like body wave appearance. So I'm just gonna comb through. And you can see how all the hair just kind of like waves together. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna just comb it out. And normally I would do a little spin with my clients, but I can't really see what my hair looks like when, or what view you're getting. So this is how I style my clients here. just for a really soft little body wave. And I can see that I'm not happy with this front area and right here where I had to go back through and re-straighten. So I'm gonna go back through and re-curl that up. Um, sometimes you just gotta go through and like seize the pieces that you're not happy with and then redo it. So we're gonna reheat my flat iron up. I am gonna curl these spots a little bit more. Let it cool down, come back in here. Yeah, this is not, I'm not happy with this at all. Let that cool down, respray it, then do a final spray. All right, and we're dry. All right, I was wondering if you knew how many times do I need to curl this hair for it to look decent. 500. We're just gonna leave it at that because I'm, I'm getting annoyed. So I hope this helped you guys to understand how I style my client's hair, how to get more of a body wave effect. Kind of like that old Hollywood vibe or some brides kind of like their hair curled this way. So if you guys have any questions or comments or concerns or whatever, go ahead and leave it in the comments below and I will be sure to get back to you. Thanks again, you guys, for watching my videos and subscribing and all that stuff. And I am out now to hopefully make it in time to get my son pictures with Santa because I'm a procrastinator. That's who I am. All right, thanks again, you guys.